Hey folks, Dan from DNN Custom Creations. Uh, tried bringing another video. It's been a long time uh, about the Langmire uh, plasma cutter. And actually, I'm kind of running out of things to uh, talk about on that plasma cutter. So if there's some topics that maybe I didn't cover or that you'd be interested in, uh, send them to me, put them in the, the, the comments. And if I can, I'll try and do something with them. But today I do have a topic. You know, I've been real happy with my Langmire's done great things. I'm making good money off of it. But there's always been one thing that I've struggled with and a little bit disappointed, and that's its ability to cut round holes. Now, it doesn't seem to be a problem for larger round holes, but the smaller they get, the more of a problem seems to show up. And so I'm going to talk about that a little bit today. I've been in contact with the Langmar Tech folks, and they've been real good about uh, affording me some recommendations. And I'm going to pass those on to you. They recommend or ask me to go ahead and do that. So I'll pass those along. But then I'm also going to do some test cuts where I'm going to change some variables and uh, see if uh, any of them make a difference. And uh, so if, uh, if you'll just hang in there with me, I'll show you what the setup's gonna be. We'll talk a little bit about what, what the Langmar Tech folks said, and then we'll actually do some cutting, see what happens. All right, hold on. Okay, let's get right into it. <clears throat> As I mentioned, uh, for me at least, uh, hole diameter, and the smaller uh, they are, the, the more of a trouble, it's always been a problem. And it seems to be more problematic for small diameter holes than if I get maybe three quarter of an inch or more, uh, then it seems to be much improved. And it gets worse for thin materials. And, and I suspect that's probably because the cut speed is higher and that uh, uh, exacerbates it a little bit. So Langmar Tech Support, let's talk a little bit about what they um, recommend. So they indicate that on almost all cases of out around holes, are due to loose motor couplers. And what they recommend is take, taking a Sharpie and you mark a point on the coupler and then you put another mark right adjacent to that on the shaft. And then after the machine has cut some, if you find that those marks have moved, then the coupler has slipped. <clears throat> now, I'll, I'll actually take you over the coupler and kind of show you that. Um, you know, I think it's probably a pretty good idea to go ahead and mark it, regardless of whether you worry about holes or not. It might, it's a good idea probably to put that Sharpie mark on the coupler and the, and the shaft to see if there is any kind of uh, slipping uh, in any part of your cutting process. Might be a good, good uh, check. So that at the end of the day or before you start another one, uh, just go over and look at those marks and if they look like they're a problem, then you know, go ahead and, and see if you can't tighten it down. And obviously if the screws are slipped, you'll have to get a new coupler. Or uh, screws are stripped, sorry about that. If it can't tighten, then you more than likely have stripped the screws in that cup or you have to get another one. I've had to do that on my Z-axis. Uh, Langmar also does not recommend cutting circles that are less than a quarter of an inch. And in fact, they say, look, if you're gonna do something smaller than that, we recommend that you just you know, do a pierce or do something to kind of mark where that hole is and then go back and either drill it or punch it or whatever in order to make that a round hole. Uh, they recommend that the diameter of the circle being cut is greater than or equal to that material thickness, otherwise bevel is going to be excessive. And I think in the in the bevel video I did, we saw some of that in the in the hole part that we were cutting. And again, they recommend post uh, drilling. You know, after you've cut it, uh, is preferred. They also indicate that uh, reducing cut speed may help. And in fact, uh, the little blurb, I just kind of uh, written it out what they say, that actually in the XR uh, plasma tables, you know, that's that fancy new one I'd love to have, uh, but their tech guy or that uh, recommends this uh, fellow named Cameron, he recommends that if any feature under two inches or so should be cut at 65% of the normal program speed or at a rate uh, no greater than 120. So if your normal program speed is below that, you know, they don't apply, but if it is, then they do. So for instance, I cut uh, 16th of an inch stuff, um, 16 gauge kind of stuff. I cut that at 250 inches per minute. And so they're indicating that for, uh, you know, if I've got a feature that's less than say a two inch diameter, and that's may not be just a circle, it could be any radius that's uh, less than and two inches. Uh, then they recommend that you go to 65%. Uh, 
So that's uh, that's their recommendation. Now, I'm wanting to uh, do some testing, and the first thing I started thinking about is, you know, does does torch height control affect hole cutting? And uh, we'll see here it probably does not for any uh, uh, hole that's a uh, you know above a certain size. So if you remember uh, the default um, in the offset is a quarter of an inch. And so also, if you remember from my uh, THC, what makes THC work and how does it work, you know, it looks to make sure it's stable for a period of time, per, a distance. And then uh, once it does, then it begins sampling to see whether that torch needs to go up or down uh, to maintain the right uh, uh, torch voltage. So, if the offset, you know, if it's going to run 25 uh, quarter of an inch and then sample it for another quarter of an inch, that means a distance of 0.5 before THC even begins to work and so uh, begins to operate. So, when you think about it, you know, if your uh, cut distance is less than that, then for the default values that we can't, that the, uh, the uh, cut uh, calls comes with, you know, it's THC is not even going to be evacuated, activated. So um, I'm going to recommend um, that we don't do that. And, and so here's some examples. <clears throat> so if your radius is a sixteenth of an inch, then your diameter then is an eighth of an inch. Well, then the distance, the circumference is uh, 0.39 inches. And so THC has not been met. So it's not going to operate. Now, if it is, if it gets up to now being where you get up to a little bit larger, well, then it does. And in fact, if you get up here a radius of an eighth of an inch, which means you're a quarter of an inch diameter, well, then the THC will begin to operate. So if we're talking about quarter of an inch holes, THC is working. However, if you remember, THC is really supposed to de, you know, help you with the um, the, for bows in the plate, you know, and torch height, uh, making sure that that uh, remains at a certain height above the plate. <clears throat> well, if you're cutting a quarter of an inch hole, by the time you move a quarter of an inch, you, you're, I don't, can't imagine a bow that would be enough for THC to even do anything and have to move. So I'm going to disregard that uh, for this study. So if you had a question of, hey, did you look at THC? Um, there's my answer. All right, so I'm going to set up a whole size test uh, plate, and I'm going to vary uh, a number of things. Uh, uh, it says four different parameters. There's more than four. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There's five parameters. So I'm going to vary the hole diameter from a quarter of an inch to one inch. I'm going to vary the pierce delay from 0.6 to 0.8, and this is all going to be in 16 gauge. I'm going to vary the entry angle from 90 to 30. And uh, so, in fact, so for instance, if I pierce here in the middle, that 90 degree is going to go 90 degrees out to the outer edge, and then it's going to start going around. But if I'm at a 30 degree, the pierce is going to, the approach is going to be from wherever the pierce is at a 30 degree angle to the edge of the hole that is cutting out. So I'm going to vary from a, this condition to this condition, see if that makes any uh, difference. I'm going to vary the cut speed from the default value, which for my 16th of an inch uh, material, 16 gauge, is 250 inches per minute. I'm going to go down as low as 125 per inches per minute, and then about 188, and see if that has any value, any effect. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just for the quarter inch holes, I'm going to look at overlap. Uh, in, I'm using Fusion 360, and there's a parameter that allows you to overlap, so when it cuts it out, it can go past the entry point, uh, however the distance is you tell it to go. And I'm going to actually go uh, a quarter of an inch farther, I mean a quarter of a diameter farther, well, actually circumference. Uh, so I'm going to go, you know, it's going to go around a full circle, and then a quarter of, of another circle farther, I'm going to go a half, so it's going to go around another half, and then I'm going to go to a full thing. So it's actually going to wind up making two, you know, it's going to cut one circle, keep going around for another circle. And so here's what I mean. You know, if the cut starts right here, 
it's going to come around and there's a there's one fold now i'll go a quarter which would probably be out here i'll go a half and i'll go around the complete one so uh, let's look at what this test setup sheet's going to look like so here's what it's going to look like um, i'm going to do here's the the 30 degree entry a 60 degree entry and for the holes here's a row of quarter inch um, uh, three eighths half inch three quarters and one inch so for the 30 degree i'm going to do um, three of them with a 0.6 delay uh, pierce then three with a 0.8 delay and if you think about it and i think you've probably seen it on your own table the longer the pierce that pierce hole begins to grow and you know you'd like it to be only the size of the kerf but uh, it's usually bigger than that uh, then for each of those I'll vary that cut speed 250 inches per minute 188 and 125 so I'll do all of these for a 30 degree entry angle and I'm going to come over and and do the very same things except with a 60 degree and so um, when I set this up in the uh, in, in C, um, Fusion 360, I had to do my 30 degree entry separately than the 90 so that I could go into the, the um, G code and muck around with it a little bit to get it to do what I wanted it to do. So it'll, it'll do the top row, come around, do this row, varying it according to all of these parameters. And then once I do the, the 30, then it'll come over here and, and do the 90. Let's see what's next. Oh, yeah. So in the G code, uh, you'll see this, this first hole's got a you know, 0.6 delay with a 250 inch per minute, then a 0.6 at 188, 0.6 at 125, then it goes to the 0.8 delay at 250, 0.8 delay 188, 0.8 delay at 125. So that's kind of the way that I'll step through. And then uh, at the end, I'm going to have to reset it up and do the, um, the um, overlap. And uh, you'll see that as well. OK, so let's, uh, let me get you set up over here on the table. And uh, we'll see what this thing looks like. OK, so hold on. Okay, so this is probably going to be pretty noisy. I'm running a fume, uh, fume hood, fans, and, and et cetera. The, the uh, air compressor is probably going to come on, obviously. And, and, uh, but we'll go ahead and see what we can get out of this. By the way, I've got uh, consumables are almost new in this. I want to try and eliminate that as a problem. I think you can see the speed difference. There's 250. There's 188. And there's 125.
Okay, that's uh, everything with a 0.6 uh, pierce delay. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch the 0.8 because it should be pretty much the same. I'm going to move this a little bit so I'm again trying to straddle a, a um, table slat so I'm not cutting right on the slat, which obviously I did down here uh, in the one inch hole. I'll try and adjust that a little bit. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and cut this next one out and I'm going to bring you back. Before we start looking at the data, I want to talk, uh, show you here what these Langmeyer folks were talking about when you're marking the uh, coupler, making sure it's not slipping on the shaft. So you can see that I have uh, made a little scribe mark on the coupler, and then I've made a little mark on the shaft. I'm not directly over top of it there, but uh, there you can kind of see they're lined up. <clears throat> so I'll cut for a couple days, whatever, and then I'll come over and look at that, and if they're not li lined up anymore, then I know that coupler has slipped. Um, and so that's what they're saying, that oftentimes out of round holes are due to that. Um, it, it didn't slip, so uh, there's your, uh, in the Y direction, obviously in the X direction, uh, there's the mark. Uh, you can't see uh, my scribe very well. It's actually, that was just a little uh, uh, some, you know, where I have taken the Sharpie and made a mark, uh, what says that kind of purple looking thing. So anyway, um, that's what they're talking about. So I realized as I was getting ready to talk about the results that I had, uh, I had misspoke and I had an error in my chart. Uh, this was going to be a, a 30 degree entry angle and this was, is actually 90. I had it listed as 60. In fact, it's 90, uh, just like the drawing I showed earlier uh, that talked about uh, what that looked like. Uh, so back to here where the 90 is going from the pierce directly to the side and then around where the 30 was piercing and then approaching it from a, a 30 degree. So just want to clear that up. <clears throat> okay, let's talk a little bit about the results. Here is the, uh, the good side, the front side. Uh, we'll look at the draw side here in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> I have a number of gauge pins over here uh, that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna test the holes with. <clears throat> and uh, so there's the the quarter of an inch. There's the 250, and we're gonna see how close we might get. And when we're trying to cut that quarter inch hole, <clears throat> are we even close? And so I've taken that gauge pin and I have tried to insert it in every one of these holes and 250 is too large. Now, if you um, back one of my videos where I talked about, gosh, I can't even remember what it was, but you can control that hole size just by adjusting your kerf. Uh, so if it was under size, you want it a little bit bigger, um, you can adjust your kerf and uh, easily correct that. But it's still not going to do anything to the roundness of your hole. And in fact, I had to go down to um, 0.237 before I was able to get this to go through. And even that, uh, not on all of them. Uh, so between <clears throat> point, uh, 0 0.237, 0 0.236. So that's about 14 thousandths less uh, in diameter. Now, the other thing we wanted to look at is the difference between, say, uh, two directions. So, I don't know if you can see this here. Um, let's zero this out. And in that direction, you can see I'm pretty darn close to a quarter of an inch, you know, 0.249. Uh, and that is fairly consistent. There's 0 0.245, 245. 244, but now if I go the opposite direction and like this, I don't know if you can see that or not, but so there's 235, 232, 236, and so the direction, that direction is less than this direction. Well, so one of those directions is Y and one is X. <clears throat> what I think may be actually causing a lot of the problem is backlash in our lead screws. Um, 
you know, if you had a ball screw in there, like on a CNC mill or something like that, where your accuracy is, you know, sub thousandths of an inch, it'd be different. For the price that we pay for these tables, obviously they can't afford to do something like that. So there's probably a little bit of backlash in those lead screws. And then when you're cutting a hole, those lead screws have to go from one direction to the other direction as it goes around uh, the circle in both directions, X and Y, in order to cut a hole. And so all the backlash is going to be, that's where the backlash is really going to show. And the smaller your diameter is, the more it's going to show because the backlash amount is going to exacerbate the, the hole size. Um, <clears throat> let's look at a couple other little things. Um, so there didn't seem to be a lot of difference between uh, these two series of holes where this was the entry angle of 30 degrees, entry angle of 90 degrees. Now, these three columns were uh, 0.6 second delay. These three columns, 0.8 second delay. Same for both sides. And then, again, as you remember, this was 250 inches per minute, 188, and 125. So the, let's look at the other side so we can see some of the, the dross. Uh, and let's look at the 30 degree or the 90 degree angle. Sorry, no, actually, that's the 30 degree. I screwed up. Uh, so this is really the 30 degree entry angle. And, you know, the dross doesn't seem to be, you know, excessive. Um, and since uh, dross is probably primarily, you know, cut height and that sort of thing, I, it, it does is affected by speed, if you remember some of the other uh, videos I did, we showed that uh, for say 11 gauge, 175 inches per minute provide a much better uh, dross than anything above or below that. <clears throat> but I don't see anything that makes it stand out. Now what, I, what you do see is uh, like right here where the pierce was. You see that is a larger, I don't know if you can see, that's a little bit larger each time where it pierced. Um, and this is the um, this is the point, let's see if I get this right, so I'm screwing it up. That's 0.6, this is 0.8. And so is there a difference between, say, the 0.6 and the 0.8? Not, not obvious. But um, here's some now where uh, this one uh, came in at 90 degrees, so it pierced and then went over there and started cutting. And it's larger than over here where it pierced, came in at 30 degrees and uh, started cutting. So um, again, not a whole lot that I can take away from that. Um, bottom line, I don't see, out of all those parameters that I varied, I don't see anything that stood out as, oh, wow, that's, uh, I should concentrate on that area. So, uh, I would love to have found something that allowed me to, you know, hone in and, and uh, get better diameter circles, but that's just not the case. <clears throat> so again, I think you'll see why the Langmire folks say, hey, look, if you're doing something down a quarter of an inch lower, just, just, you know, pierce it uh, and don't actually cut anything, and then that'll give you a spot to put your drill point in and drill it out or punch it out or whatever. So I uh, wish I had uh, a good answer for you to tell you how to make perfect holes, but <laughs> I don't. All right, uh, the next thing I need to do is the last test um, where we do the overlap to see if that has any effect. I'll bring you back. So I mentioned in Fusion 360 the, uh, you could do the overlap. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but I'll show you real quick. Here I've got just a simple plate with a quarter inch diameter hole in it. <clears throat> and if we uh, go to the manufacturing tab, and I've already got a, a hole uh, cut, let's edit that. And so you are, uh, there's the tool, obviously pick the outline of the hole. And this tab is, where the passes tab is where that overlap is. And you can see I've got a, a value down there of 0.32 inches. Now where I came up with that 
is if you, uh, let me go ahead and, and uh, do an okay here, get back to the front view, and you can see this red is where it's going to start to pierce, it's going to go all the way around, and then continue to uh, cut for another half. And the way that was calculated was um, if this kerf, my kerf uh, for my uh, hypertherm in 16 gauge is 46 thousandths. So I just took uh, half of that, which would be uh, uh, 23 thousandths. And so here from the center to that location would have been 0.125 minus that 0.23, so there's 0.102. Using that uh, radius, then 2 pi r, tells me what the path length is. And so from that value, I can just say, you know, divide by four, and it'll give me a quarter inch. Divide by two, it gives me the half inch, or double it, and it will go twice. So um, that's basically it. Let me uh, go ahead and we'll simulate this. You can see there's cut around one time, and then we'll goes one another half. And so that's where you find that in the... Uh, um, Fusion 360. Okay, thanks. Okay, we've done the uh, overlap uh, test. Uh, these are the three holes uh, where the first one I overlapped, so it cut the full circle and then went another quarter of a circle. Uh, this one cut the full circle and went another half circle. And this one cut the circle and went another complete circle. Um, and actually some interesting results. Let's go back to the first uh, test where we weren't overlapping. Uh, we were just uh, stopping. It went around one time, stopped right where it Pierce was. And um, this is, they're all pretty similar. So I didn't, I just picked the first one. So this one is a 0.6 second delay, um, 250 inches per minute and entering at 30 degrees. By the way, all of these also entered at 30 degrees. I wanted to keep that consistent. Um, and what I've done is I've measured in the X direction across that hole and the Y direction. X direction being this way, Y direction being this way. And the X direction, uh, if you use the um, uh, indicator or actually the gauge, it says that there's it's 250 thousandths there in the y direction, it's 237,000. So that's a difference between the x and the y of 13 thousandths of an inch. When we get down to the overlap, uh, it actually improved. And so in the x direction and the y direction, so here again, there's the x direction, the y direction this way. And in the x was 0.244, in the y, 0.238. And I could actually get a 0.237 gauge in that, uh, pretty much the same as I could in this hole uh, originally. Uh, but that's a difference only six thousandths of an inch, where here we had a difference of a 13 thousandths of an inch. So it, it, um, even though I could get this, the gauge in both those holes, this actually conformed to that round pin much better than this one did. When I got to half the overlap, where I went around another half, um, I could get a, a gauge pin that was 0.243. So that's only seven thousandths less than the 250 thousandths that it was supposed to be. Um, and you can see from the X and the Y, they're getting pretty close. In fact, the difference between X and Y is only three thousandths of an inch. Then for the full overlap, I could actually get a, a pin through that thing that was, in fact, here is the, the pin uh, that came out. It's a 0.247, and you can see that it fits through there. In fact, I might even go back, be able to go up. Let's go 248. Yeah, 248 goes through there, uh, barely. Let's see if uh, by chance I can get a 249 through there. No. So... <clears throat> Uh, 0.248, but that's only two thousandths less than uh, what we wanted. And the, again, the X and Y are, are pretty darn close. They're not quite as close as that half overlap. And I don't know if that's uh, typical. It just happened to be the random. I'm not sure. But the bottom line is this overlap command. I'm not sure if you have it in um, your cut control that you use. 
uh, in your uh, CAM uh, programs, but in Fusion 360, uh, you can set that overlap value. And so I basically did was uh, took the radius um, uh, and, you know, and actually found the circumference and then figured out how much farther I had to go to go a quarter, a half, and a, and a full amount was just two times that. Now, yeah, I had to muck around with a little bit because it's, uh, it's not the circumference of the 250 thousandths because your curve value, you're offset a little bit, so it's actually less than that. Uh, so you have to um, muck around a little bit to try and the, the quote true radius to get that circumference. Uh, and I just, I, you know, I, I guessed at it. I put a number in there and kind of look at where it was and, and put another. I didn't try and figure it out or calculate it. But bottom line, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. And in fact, I think for when I'm doing small holes, um, it's going to be kind of a pain for I'll have to go into those holes in the cab in the cam program and if it's below a certain amount i'll have to take that hole individually and do the cut path with an overlap instead of doing it all because certainly if you had a, a complex thing with all kinds of shapes in it you wouldn't want to overlap all of them um, but if i'm cutting things where it's going to be a little bit more important for me to get a round small hole in area of quarter inch then uh, uh, that would be one option is to increase your overlap value. All right, uh, I think that's it. Hope I didn't confuse anybody. Uh, if you got questions, just leave them in the comments. And again, I'm kind of running out of things to uh, talk about on our Langmeyer table. So if you've got some topics or things you'd like me to um, investigate, uh, why don't you put them in the comments and I'll see if I can do that. All right, thanks a lot. Dan from DNN Custom Creations.